He wants to go make television and doesn't want to stay here and finish the day because apparently the fat cats at CBS want him in New Orleans. So a big round of applause and a thank you to Mr. Rob Benedict who's taking off. It's been a heck of a weekend, Bobo. Heck of a weekend, Bobo. Heck of a year, Bobo. We did it, Rich. Let's, uh, been a great year, been a great weekend. Great show last night, buddy. Thank you. I go, love you guys. Go kick ass and do some quality television on the uh, Central Broadcasting Service, please. Will do. Thank Let, you, Rich. Now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, the woman who does one of the best Scottish accents I've ever heard, Ruth Connell. She's a black magic woman. She's a black magic woman. She is a black magic woman, got me so blind that I can't see. That she's a black magic woman, and she's gonna make a devil of Mike. She's such a black magic woman. She's a black magic woman. She's a black magic woman. <laughs> Ruining the song. She's a black magic woman And he's never been a piano player all along You really nailed it, Rich What are we doing next? <laughs> Ina got Five, it Five, six, Ina. seven, Anna Take it back! Jazz, jazz, jazz. Jazz. Uh, careful, Adam will get jealous. Careful. I wrote that. Did you, you wrote that? You improvised that on the spot? You made that up on the spot? What? I'm so sorry. He's having an episode. You just have to go with it. And it'll end. Hello's your panel. All right, fine, I can take a hand. Apparently, you'd rather listen to Ruth than watch me fiddle with the organ. Ladies and gentlemen, Whoa. Ruth Connell. Wait, what, oh, what? Hi. <laughs> I, appre I appreciate your organ fiddling, it was awesome. I, be I bet you do, you <laughs> minx. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Hi. Hi. Wow, it's Sunday. We're still all here. Like, what? What? Is it because there's two big dudes called Jared and Johnson? Are they, are they around today? Have you seen them? Do Jensen's freckles still match? They're symmetrical. His freckles are symmetrical. He's so perfect. <laughs> How are you? This is when I take it personally, when people leave the room. <laughs> oh, that's right, you came back, you came back. Okay, I'm, a good, I'm good enough for you, very good. Thanks, thanks for coming back. Yes, you, I'm talking to you with your shoulders out, your sexy shoulder. I see you, sit back down. Stay here for my panel. Who cares about that musha dude? Oh, I'm, oh, I've got a sticker on my, jump, my jumper, my jacket saying Misha, it's basically Misha for president. Misha for 2020. I think Emily Swallow should run his campaign. <laughs> the, dark, the darkness is so... It's about right, let's face it. So, so, I have some stolen goods. <laughs> Who doesn't know about my stolen goods? Too bad. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a bit of business first. First of all though, but actually before I do anything, I'm just gonna show off my secret Santa present. It's bigger than I am. <laughs> Hillary got me it, Hillary was my secret Santa. It's fabulous, isn't it? 
I thought you were supposed to buy cheap shit. <laughs> Oops. So that's that. I wanted to show that off. Also because I didn't want to leave it in the green room. I don't trust those, those other actors. <laughs> um, so one important thing I do want to say is you, some of you know I support the charity My Hope Chest. So I have these uh, wristbands. I'm going to give anybody who's brave enough to ask me a question a wristband and perhaps a stolen good. What I, I want to share with you is um, your last chance of the year um, to make a small donation or as big a donation as you want. Um, I have these lovely fridge magnets with butterflies on them um, because that's how they think of the charity is like having women turn into these butterflies after their reconstruction, after they've gone through treatment for cancer and they haven't had the proper insurance or money to pay for the reconstruction that they would have liked. And over the last 10 years, they've paid for 50 women's... Um, Boob jobs, essentially. So it's a very small grassroots charity where, the, you know, you know, there's not a lot of money goes into extraneous things. A lot of the money goes straight to the surgeries. The doctors do a lot of the surgeries for discounted prices. They work in partnerships. So it's a lot of work for the lady who runs the charity. So these will be at my table. If you come and you show me your page where you've donated the price of a cup of coffee or more, whatever you can afford, I will give you a fridge magnet. And it's the last chance this year, and this is the, this is the last of them. So limited edition. And I, appreciate, I, I really appreciate um, people who've already been here, who's, who've already followed them online. That's a real big thing we can do to help them because they're such a small charity to raise their profile. The more followers they have, the more chance they get sponsorship. So if you can't afford to donate anything, if you could follow them on Twitter or Facebook, give them a little like. Um, she, can tell, uh, she can tell wherever I have, have been in the country because suddenly she gets like 100 more followers in Jacksonville or, and it's really awesome. You can kind of track where I've been all year round by the followers on their, their social media and it really means a lot to them. So thank you for all your support for this charity and um, anything else you can spare this time. And yeah, so I have some shampoo, verbena and lavender. Oh, this is conditioner actually. I've got my glasses on. Uh, which actually, this is so appropriate that this is the first thing I pulled out. Can we just talk about the humidity? Do you have any idea how much conditioner is in this? I have it strapped down and it's like... How do, how do you live? Braids, shaving it, what else? Holy cowabunga, I mean... The, I, I don't even know how to explain what my hair looked like this morning. I, I put out a gift. Anyway, so there's conditioner, which even if I was to put this straight onto my hair right now, wouldn't make a difference. Um, so, yes. So, people who don't know about my stolen goods, um, a few years ago now, when I first did my first convention, um, my friend Erica Carroll, who played Hannah, turned up for our first panel. She had these beautiful handmade cupcakes that said SPN Family, and she had these to give to people in the, in the audience, and I had... Uh, I had me. I had nothing. And when I went home that night to my room in the hotel, outside the hotel was a hotel toiletry cart. And I thought, everyone loves a good conditioner, shampoo, shumit. I still don't know what you use those for. So anyway, it's a bit of a tradition now um, that I take as many toiletries from whatever hotel I'm in and redistribute the wealth, which brings me to the last bit of my speech, and I promise I'll answer some questions just now. A little, somewhat born of this idea, um, random acts and all their glory, and, and from all of you guys, have managed to pull together nearly 2,500 toiletries for a crisis, a youth crisis center in Jacksonville. That's more toiletries than I could ever carry. And thank you so much. Um, it means a lot, obviously, to young people who don't have any money um, to be able to have toothpaste, all the things we take for granted. So thank you so much. You've been so generous. So I, in turn, will be generous and give you the stolen good if you ask me a half-decent question. What's your name? Where are you from? What do you want? Um, Caitlin. Hi, Caitlin. Hi. Hi. Um, so first off, I just want to say that I really love you, and you're just an absolute badass and I, I was I've got badass <laughs> no I don't there's nothing wrong with my ass I, I was 
was just wondering if you could have the opportunity to use one of Rowena's spells right now, what would it be and why? Or what's your favorite? Happy! And the person flies through the air, especially Jensen. <laughs> that was fun. I like when I summon the devil as well, that's pretty fun. You know, just the usual. <laughs> I loved, um, do you, did you, do you remember the episode? And I get mixed up whether it was called Funeralia or Various and Sundry Villains. Various, I think I'm, I'm getting my brains mixed up just now, but when I'm on the floor inside uh, and I'm, I'm releasing my bonds. Do you remember that bit in the, yeah. the purple? I love the Latin incantation there and the try, you know, I was careful to really know what I was saying, what the, what the translation meant. And it was about free my voice, release me, let me step into my full power. And it was so good for me to have to say that over and over and over again, like an affirmation until I choked <laughs> and I said, bollocks, really, really loudly straight into camera. Uh, I don't know if I'll make the gag reel or not, I'm not sure. Um, so I, that wasn't so much of a, well, I suppose it was a spell but it's the kind of spell that we can all cast. You know, we can all say really powerful things to ourselves rather than the stuff that we normally say, like, that was stupid, why did you say that, you know? Um, to actually be given a script where I'm, I'm, I'm there saying, you know, return me to my true nature, which is power. Let me, you know, free my voice, let me speak my truth. That, that I mean, I just love doing it. And I still do it in my bedroom at home sometimes on my own. I don't, that was a joke. But thank you for your question. I'm going to get you a bracelet. Thanks for you at the back, the lone woo. It was like a, such a lonely woo. <laughs> I'm coming. Fergus, 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 Fergus. Thank you. Thank you. Fergus, 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 Winchester, 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 Winchester. Fergus, 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 Fergus. If I had a dollar for every time I had to say Fergus, I'd have at least 25 bucks. Where have you been? Were you getting lunch? Is that where you were? Holy macaroni. What did you get? Can I see them? Maybe. Where are you sitting? I'll come back over and get some. Where are you? Okay. I'm keeping my eye on you. With your chicken tenders. A likely story. Hi. 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 Who was here last night? Oh man, I had such a bum note last night. I'm so glad you don't care. A wee lamb. Oh, my wee lamb. Meh. Is that what you meant? Oh, my wee lamb. <laughs> hi, hi, hi. Did you have fun last night? Hi, 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 hi. Oh, hi. Hello. Are you feeling outnumbered? Are you feeling outnumbered? Like me ganging up on you. He's a cool cat. Is he yours? Is he yours? Oh. Hi. 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 Why are you standing at the back? What are you doing? What are you up to? You should be at the front paying attention to all my words of wazoo. What are you doing? You having a little disco? You're just like having a little phone disco? It was only 42%. Holy m Hello, hi, what's your name? What's your name? <laughs> You're so cute. Isab Isabella. Oh. Hi, 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 hi. Don't worry, I'm not going to MIA Angel, it's okay. Hi, where have you been? <laughs> Hi, where have you been? Where have you been? I'm up. 
I'm up there talking nonsense and you weren't here to hear it. <laughs> Hi. How, what did you do? Were you drunk? Oh, hi, 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 hi. Oh, hi, Red. Hi. I should answer another question. Yeah, like, well, we're having my Sunday, my Sunday constitutional walk. Good afternoon. What is your name? Oh, I just messed up my shoelace. What's your name? Where are you from? What do you want? My name's Amanda. I'm from Jacksonville, Florida, and awesome. all my life I've been dealt with special needs and bullying because of my special needs, because watching Supernatural actually helps me strive and helps me focus on family and fa uh, focus on always keep fighting and, and, and family and good. How did you handle boys when you were younger and any advice dealing with, uh, dealing with those, those issues that, that plague us all, like, you know, anxiety and stuff like that? Um, how, do I how did I handle bullies? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to get something for you and come back. Yes, I love your question. Mm -hmm. I love your honesty Thank you. and your directness and your ownership of your experience. I don't think I dealt with it very well. <laughs> it's all going to rye. Um, I don't think I handled it very well. I so silly. Uh, when I first went to high school, I loved learning. And I'm just going to give you a fridge magnet because I think you might like that. Um, I loved studying and I did quite well at school. And as a consequence, also because I did ballet and I looked like I had a rod up my ass and I've got a slightly turned down nose. People thought I was a snob. I used to get called snob. And, <laughs> My mum had bought me a mider datter and mider datter. Um, my friend had long white socks, and eventually my mum bought me these long white socks. And when I turned up at high school, it wasn't cool to wear long white socks. But my mum was like, eh, no, you're wearing them. <laughs> I bought them, you're wearing them. So I'm at high school, I'm a, bit, um, I'm a bit of a swat. I'm wearing long white socks, and I was doing quite well at school. And uh, yeah, I got... I was made to feel uh, like uh, it wasn't good to succeed. And um, <laughs> I've changed that. I pay licensed professionals to help me with that stuff. I do think it's the way forwards. It's something that really in Scotland, we're not as open about it as say in California. I don't know what it's like in Jacksonville. Um, the word therapy, you know, all that stuff. I didn't actually get any help till I was over 30. I just, my way of coping was just to push on through and pretend everything was okay. There's a Scottish saying, you get your head down and you get on with it. And I was very good at that, but I wasn't very happy inside. So eventually, it's never too late. At the age of 30, I started to try and help myself because I was having success in my career. I was the lead in this play. I was doing all these things, I still wasn't happy. I thought when I got the things that I wanted, I would be happy. That's not how it works. Life is an inside job. Uh, I still don't do very well with um, feeling bullied sometimes. It's still hard to speak up. Sometimes as an introvert, which I know I don't maybe seem like I am because I'm on stage, but I'm, I'm not the loudest person in a room, you know? Uh, I still don't find it easy. I, I think it is challenging. And I, I have a coach I speak to, I'm like, what should I say to this person? You know, I get help because it's not easy. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for your um, question. And well done, well done you for, uh, for getting through. Thank you. Yeah, I think you're awesome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Hi. 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 What's your name? Where are you from? What do you want? I'm Stasia. I'm from Sonoya, Georgia. Oh. And my question is, who or what inspired you to go into acting? Um, uh, Vivian Lee. <laughs> Gone with the wind. I was so young when I saw it. And I was like, oh, I have to be like her. 
And I knew I wanted to be like Vivian Lee, not Scarlett O'Hara, do you know? Um, but it took me, it took me about another 20 years to get there. I, uh, I always danced, I knew how to dance. Um, and uh, I performed, but I wasn't very confident. Cotton wool? Sure. You can shove it in your ears so you don't have to listen to the rest of my long-winded answer. <laughs> I, um, I, I wasn't very confident with speaking or singing. Still not with, with them singing. Um, and I felt like it was a bit grandiose to say I want to be an actress. I felt like that sounded like I wanted to say I was wanted to be a movie star. And that's weird mm -hmm. for a wee midget from Bonnie Bridge. <laughs> I didn't think that was possible. <laughs> um, so by dancing, by coming into contact with actors I did shows with, I started to see plays, little two-hander plays, and I thought, I could do that. And then I thought, maybe I could do that little part in television, and maybe I could go to London, and maybe I could go to America, <laughs> and, and maybe I could audition for Super, you know? So it's been, a, it's been a long journey, but I'd say, I really remember really consciously at the age of about nine or 10, being in my bedroom, saying to myself, you know, if I could be like Judy Dench, or Helen Mirren, like my life would have meant something. Mm. And I don't feel the same. I think our lives mean something regardless of what we do, the relationships we have and the contribution we make wherever we are. But I'm, yeah, I'm so, I'm so grateful that that was my calling. It's very, very, it's a very tough industry as you know, but look at this just now. <laughs> look how wonderful this is. Thank you for your question. I'm going to guess, do you want to be an actress too? I thought so. I like your glasses. <laughs> How are you all doing? <laughs> nice. Nice to know you've not all fallen asleep on me. Waffling on. Good afternoon. What um, is your name? Where are you from? What do you want? My name's Shelby. I'm from here in Jacksonville. Oh, cool. And I've been writing a book series about second chances and oh. the series asked the question um how far can you go to push a bond until it breaks what would you think about a series like that wow sounds amazing that's what um that's what so much drama is about the push and pull the stakes when something snaps yeah, it's like a bond between a horse and a person and it's like how far can you push oh. it until it breaks a, a horse and a person yeah Can you expand? Um, so yeah, it's a horse and a boy that are raised together and each part, um, each book like pushes them further and further away from each other. And it's how, how far can you go until it'll break that bond. So every single conflict is even farther. And it's kind of how far can they strengthen this bond? How much do they mean to each other? It's interesting, I think, um, uh, in, in energy work, we talk about relationship cords. Um, it's a, like a fictional series. Yeah, but I'm saying as, as people, as with our, our relationship with animals, with anybody we've ever met, we have a relationship cord. And some people, the cord is really thick because you have a lot of interaction and a lot of uh, relationship with them. And it can get pulled and stretched and pulled and stretched. I do believe you can chop them and it's a horrible feeling. I think some of the greatest stories are about exactly what you're talking about, things that get stretched beyond what you think is unforgivable. Yeah. Uh, so I don't think you can go too far. Because I think, honestly, some of those bonds go on past life. I think you come back in your next life with a soul connection to someone, you've got to sort that shit out the second time round. <laughs> I do. Does anybody else believe that? <laughs> it's honestly since being involved in Supernatural and being in Los Angeles, and uh, drinking the Kool-Aid <laughs> that I really, um, I, I really believe. I really believe in those bonds and between people and animals and other humans or whoever. Thank you for your question. Thank you. Thank you, nice to see you. <laughs> Thank you. <sighs> it's like a disco in here with the lights going up and down. Maybe we should have a dance. Would you like that? Oh, let's just do it. Are you ready, Krista? Are you, you don't know, you're tired from last night. Let's do it. Who believes in miracles? 
Can we do that? Do we have that music? I believe in miracles. Can we do it? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> we'll see if we have it. And what I'll do is I will get my phone out and I will live stream it to 220,000 people. <laughs> Sound all right? Okay. Okay. I'm just going to get set up whilst we're getting the... Um... I'm going to teach you the dance. Don't worry. It involves a cowboy lasso move. It's awesome. You'll love it. Okay, so I've got the live video. Okay, it's, new, it's ready to go. And, um, levez-vous. Everyone stand up or sit up or whatever you can do. Oh, dear, do you, who was here before? Who remembers this dance? This is your, sun, this is your Sunday jig. It used to be an inauguration into the mega coven. It can still be that if you'd like it. Okay, so we're going to start off with, just let's, just let's gyrate our hips. I believe in miracles. So is it since you came along? Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to go Saturday Night Fever. Since you came along, you sexy thing, you sexy thing. I believe in miracles. Whatever it is. And the cowboy lasso. And then you go, yeah, yeehaw. And that's it. And, but I really want to see your hips move. <laughs> like, really a lot. Because that's what makes me laugh. <laughs> and if, can we find the music? Can we find the music? No. We'll just have to sing it. Yeah, somebody YouTube it. Can somebody YouTube it? Okay, can you sing it? Okay, you sing it louder than me because this is not all working. <laughs> Yeah? So after three, one, two, three. I believe in miracles. Where you from? You sexy thing. You sexy thing. I believe in miracles. Since you came along, you sexy thing. Yeah. Okay, that was terrible. <laughs> that was awful. Of all the terrible dances I've ever done at any convention that was the worst but that's the beauty of it has anybody got the YouTube of the song can you awesome ready uh, oh <laughs> leaving miracles where are you from you sexy thing I believe in miracles ready okay bye Yeah. Okay, I need a big yeah at the end. Okay. Okay. Who feels confident? I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad somebody does because I don't. <laughs> Can anybody sing this goddamn song? <laughs> somebody? Come here. Come here. Thank you. Okay, can you, have, can you use this and sing? when it's the right point. Do you mind? Do you mind giving her your phone? Thank you. You can stay here. Stay here. Okay, come up. Come on. I believe in miracles. Technical issues. Can you go back to the beginning? Okay, is everybody ready? Okay, so you start it. Um, we'll, we'll get ready. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Okay. You 
a sexy thing. I believe in miracles. William Long, you sexy thing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for the loan of your phone. That was so bad, it was brilliant. That was so bad, it was brilliant. Oh dear, we have no idea what we're doing here. It's okay. Say hi, say goodbye, rather. We've got to go and salvage something from this panel. Okay, bye. Thank you so much for being such good sports. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, is it this side? You next. What's your name? Where are you from? What are you My want? name's Kat. I'm from Jacksonville. Oh, cool. And um, I really like your outfit. Thanks. And this, then... Okay, so... Oh, no. My jeans have to keep pulling them up. So this is like my book author. It's a jumpsuit. Oh, what do you call it? Like a leotard. And I wore it to the book signing. Lynn's book saying of Family Don't End in Blood. So this is, I feel like I look like J.K. Rowling in this. Do you, do you know what I mean? Or like Madonna when she launched her children's book. She wore, a, she wore like a, a bow. So thank you. I wore it special today. Thank you. It's only the second time I've ever worn it. <laughs> and um, my question is, do you think that Rowena, now that her powers are unbound and that she has the Book of the Damned, that she's working on trying to bring Crowley back? That's what, that's what that whole episode was about with death. That was when I challenged, oh God, it's no spoilers, you've all seen it, right? Yeah. No, um, that's what that was all about. That was her, that was everything she wanted suddenly was to get him back. I think she's come to terms, as much as Rowena can accept anything isn't going the way she wants it to go. I think she's come to terms with that. And I think it's interesting to see she's on this kind of redemption arc, helping the boys. Can't wait for you to see the next episode. Uh, how do you feel about facial soap enriched with comfrey extracts? What's comfrey? Pizza. It's a type of pizza. What is it? Oh, it's an herb. It's got herbs in it. Herbs, as you guys say. Herbs. <laughs> no, I, I really, I, um, I'm really excited to, f to film my next episode. I think you're going to like it. He, yeah, I think you're going to like it. I just was around at Mark's house last week. I had dinner. He's doing very well. He's filmed something else that's really cool that you're going to love. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, he's, his, you know when Mark's tail's wagging, you can tell. He's got a bit of a, you know, he's all like that because he's been filming something really cool really really cool so yeah I'm, I'm, um, I'm sure you'll be all the Mark Shepherd fans Crowley fans will be excited to see him hello hi what's your name uh, Sam where are you from uh, Georgia what do you want so um, through all of the obstacles that you've been through in your life and just the hard times and everything how do you maintain such a happy and positive and just a bubbly look on everything? I pay, I pay licensed professionals. <laughs> uh, no, I, um, I'm serious. It's work. I have a lot to be grateful for. Um, you, can, you, know, you can tell somebody's life story. You can tell a life story where you go, this happened and I went through this and then this and then this and then this. You can also, the same life, say, well, that happened, but then this happened, and then this happened. Because that's the truth. Most, most people's lives have contrast. And it's how we adapt to the difficult things. I think it's the number one best thing I've ever done for myself was to help myself with my mentality. And I still get it wrong. And I still struggle. My coach, she's in her 70s. She's amazing. She's been sober for 35 years. She's married to a woman. She dated Dennis Hopper in the 60s. She's lived like a whole life. She still says, she still has her, excuse my French, her shit fits. No matter how, she's got a PhD in psychology and 
everything else, no matter how evolved you are, we're still human, we still mess up. Just her shit fits are shorter than they used to be. And uh, it's work. It's work, but it's the, I think there's so many people who are so talented, have so much to offer, and they never get to make their contribution because they can't get past um, a, a wound. Um, and uh, I, I, I believe that that kind of help should be available the same way as help is available if you hurt your knee or you break your arm. I feel if you've had a, yeah, it just. Thank you for your question. I've got some fancy body lotion. I find the body lotions quite hard to give away because I really like them. I may have used a little bit. Thank you. <sighs> How's it all going? You all right? You good? You good? Oh, another question. Hello. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Where are you from? What do you want? Uh, I'm Tori. I'm from Long Island. And I was just wondering if you were like in your own version of the French mistake, but you were, and you were Rowena and you had all of her powers, what would you do? So I'm Ruth with all Rowena's powers. <laughs> I used to have this fantasy when I was a little girl where my, my, my town centre, Falkirk town centre, that time stopped for everyone else apart from me. And I could, because I didn't, I didn't have a lot of material things growing up, um, that I could go into a shop and take that dress and uh, I think it would be really cool to make time freeze and you could go up to some people and pump a punch them in the nose and they would never know it was you and other people you could go up and you could stroke their cheek and tickle their <laughs> elbow you guys are awful you guys are awful mind in the in the gutter <laughs> what would yours be um I don't know I I would just have like a lot of fun with it. I don't know. I don't know exactly what I would do. Yeah, I'm. I'm trying to really. Yeah, I would freeze time. I think time is such a pressure on us all. I've got to get this done. I've got to go. But to be able to freeze time. Yeah. Or maybe like I'd have like make people do what I want them to do. Oh, yeah. but I do that anyway, love. <laughs> no, but like I know what you mean. Like they have no free will of their own. <laughs> There's no fun in that, though. It's when people have free will and you still make them do what you want. Yeah. Am I weird? Yes. Am I actually Rowena? Yes. No. <laughs> Thank you for your question. It's a good question. I'm going to think about it more. I'm going to think about it more. Your question. Thank you. I would also, if I could do anything, I would also just order a gin. I'd, I'd have waiters. If I could snap my fingers right now, I'd have a bunch of really handsome uh, waiters and uh, waiting staff, wait waiters and waitresses come in with trays and serve you all pink champagne <laughs> or mineral water, maybe some steak, I like a bit of steak, uh, some flourless chocolate cake, uh, a, a free massages for everyone. Probably a pedicure. And then, that's enough. is that enough? Oh, you guys want to go all the way? Again. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, so, What's your name? Where are you from? What I'm sorry, what? <laughs> What's your name? Alyssa. Where are you from? Um, Bluffton, South Carolina. What would you like to know? Um, when you were a child, what was your favorite Christmas tradition and why? Oh, it's getting to that time of year, isn't it? <sighs> I just, when I was really little, I just liked coming through into the living room and Santa had been so simple, really, isn't it? The, um, the anticipation. What's this? Body lotion? No? You prefer a fridge magnet, I think. Maybe. Um, just that. 
just coming through. And um, my mum uh, makes this thing, we call them cheesies. They're so bad for you. So you, it's basically French toast with loads of cheddar cheese and onion in the middle and you grill it really slowly. So it's still slightly moist on the inside and the cheese melts, but it's um, toasty on the outside. And that was the only day of the year you were guaranteed <laughs> that for breakfast. So I still get that. I still get that when I go home. Cheesy. It's your cholesterol for the month. And it's awesome. What's your favorite? What's your favorite? Um, making sugar cookies. Sugar cookies. Oh, are you going to make some this year? Are you going to make some this year? I already have. She, oh, you did it. That's yeah. awesome. And I already ate them too. And she already ate them. <laughs> oh, girl. A girl after my own heart. Well done. <laughs> so cute. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm not too bad for a That's Sunday. Good. Didn't have much whiskey last night, so it's okay. It's true. True story. What, what's your name? Where are you from? What would you like to know? My name is Tegan. I'm from Orlando. And my question is, what was it like to play a character that changed so drastically from her first appearance to how she was seen in the last few yeah. episodes? And also, which one was your favorite more to play? Like, Bad Rowena, where she was the enemy of the Winchesters, or like where she's allied with them and helping them? It's all so much fun. <laughs> and it's amazing over 30 episodes, I think, to have a storyline that zigs and zags. And it changes depending on the writer as well. I can tell, you know, I could read a script probably and tell you who'd written the script, probably. Because it there's a to there's a I love it. Yeah. It's so interesting. And I love the fact that um, the writers have allowed her to have a lot of depth because that's what I think we mean by strong <laughs> female characters. Like, there's, just, there's no such thing, right, as a strong, like, what does that mean? Like, I'm She-Ra, mm. um, but a la layered mm. female characters. And I think it's really important, I'm going to say this, um, when I first got the job, people asked me, who are you playing? What's your role? And I would say, I play the mother of the king of hell, which was true. And I was proud of the fact that I was <laughs> playing the mother of the king of hell. My friends were like, of course you're playing the mother of the king of hell. Well, what else would you play? Um, but now if people ask me, what do you play? And I say, I play Rowena. She's a 360-something-year-old Scottish witch. Because she's a person, she's a woman on her own terms, not uh, identifying solely by the masculine relationship. In her. And that's not me, that's the writers. And I think they're awesome. I, I, wish, I wish they could come here and you could hear them and talk to them. They're so smart and, yeah. That, did, I, did I answer your question? Absolutely, yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank nice you. to meet you. Cotton wool? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, dear. I think the band are having a cup of tea back there. They're taking a long time to come back out. I'm just going, I'm just going on and on and on. Are you all right? <laughs> Hello. Hi. What's your name? Paige. Paige. Where are you from? I'm from Clearwater. Oh, what do you want? <laughs> um, I was wondering, I was wondering if you had any advice for someone who would like to be an actress in the future and how I would be able to get there. And how they? How they'd be able, how I would be able to get there as an actress. Um, so what I know about acting, because I'm one of those geeks about acting, I, you see an actor, I can probably tell you something about them. I've read all of their blurbs on IMDb Pro. I can probably tell you something about most. Somebody say an actor. Sean Connery um, was brought up in an area of Edinburgh where he had an outside toilet. They were so working class. And when he got the audition for James Bond, he was so rough around the edges, but they said when he walked away from the audition, his balls were clanging. Um, <laughs> So I'm that person that knows all the stories about all the actors. So there is no one way. Hi. 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 Oh. Maestro. 
<laughs> I'm gonna not ruin the end of your panel with my <laughs> no, it's bad okay. piano. I'm just gonna finish. I'm just gonna finish waffling to this lovely young, young person. I'm gonna give you a fridge magnet and and a body lotion. Uh, so, so, so the point was there was I was waffling on, but there was a point. There is sometimes a Always. point. Always, I, mean, I, I can know. only imagine uh, that there are so many different ways. Every everyone's story is different. My Practical advice would be find a youth theatre, do drama, find a youth theatre, find drama colleges at school. Awesome. And find good mentors, find good people to follow. Thank you for your question. Thank you. Hi. Ruthie, how was your experience handing out stolen goods? Was it? How was, was it? it? Oh, was it? They're all my accomplices now. They're, yeah, I know they're all accomplices. You're all, you're all arrestable. Ladies and gentlemen, you know her, you love her. Ruth Connell. She's a white Scottish woman. She's a white Scottish woman. So white. She's a white Scottish woman. She got me so blind I can't see. And she's a white Scottish woman too. Gonna make a Scotsman out of me. She's so freaking white. She's barely transparent, almost opaque. The skin like pearl, like a dove's wings. Mike Borja, you know what I mean. She's a white Scottish woman, and she's so freaking white. It makes me hurt. She's so white, so Scottish too. What a combo, like vanilla ice cream with strawberry on top, with a side of scotch. Ha! All right, everybody.